Hannah, can you do this audio over here? You know how to get to it, right? Yeah, okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. Anyway, so it's not ready yet, though. So just, in, we don't. I don't want it yet, but in a little while. Anyway, so that's what they do. So they, they do that, and they ask them if they, they, they ask them that they, uh, if they want, oops, where's my Bible and my, my iPad? Where's that at? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. So, anyway, they ask him that, and the first thing they ask him is if they want, you know, if they want light, or what they what they're there for, and it's light. So, how in the world can you be a Christian and say that you're there from a, from this occultic people and you need light from them? We're going to talk about that light tonight a little bit, but but it's just it's interesting to me how <clears throat> how this I mean oh absolutely uh, I mean there's Scottish free right masonry there's 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 a few others but I'm sure it's about the same it's it's a blue lodge I'm sure it's what it is I mean you know it's the entry level stuff and. Uh, I mean, I just can't imagine like letting somebody just stick a rope over my head and blindfold me. I mean, that part alone. Wow, I didn't know that. Uh, that 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 part alone would be enough to get me to say, "Um, no." I mean, who would let somebody blindfold them and stick a noose around their neck or whatever and put them in pajamas? You know, weird stuff. Yeah. What'd she say? She'd always say, well, not the Scottish right. You don't understand, not the Scottish right. Yeah, the Scottish oh. right. Yes. Yes, the Scottish right. You know, she, so she'd say, well, Implying that what I was saying was true, but not in the not the Scottish right. Understand the Scottish right. Yeah, it's the the order of the Eastern Stars. She was, and uh, they are they are just as wicked. I mean, as far as their false doctrine goes, and uh, they're a little more subtle with it. I mean, they they try to they they try to make it a little bit more like Bible and and uh, you know just like the order of the Eastern Star order. Of the Eastern Star Order, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's that? Oh, I'm sure there's a lot of people in those, and I mean it's very popular. Uh, those those things are very. I mean, then the, for the kids, they have what the Demole or whatever, and uh, you know everything like that. You've heard of that? Yeah, they have kids. It's kids. It's to introduce the kids into Freemasonry. Yeah. I'll get my dad's little red Corvette, and then he go-kart, and I ride it in the Northfield train, and let me go. That's the big band. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, he's got it. He's got that little red, and he's sitting around. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, so anyway, I'm going to start a series sometime soon. I've got to figure out my Mac PowerPoint type thing, and I think I got—I I think I should be able to figure it out. But I want to put some things together and do that, and uh, teach on that, so you understand that. So why do I need to know any of that stuff? Well, you need to know because it's all around you, and there's people that would you would you want to know if people were taking oaths, people that you know around you, and these oaths were being taken above that of the Constitution, above that of the Bible, above that of anything else. I mean, I'd want to know that these people were taking those. I'd want to know that people that I love or people that I know that I I would want to know where they sit because I'll tell you something once the Antichrist gets his agenda in full swing and uh, as is coming you're going to see these defectors and these people and they're going to, they're going to follow that light that they get from that and you say oh that's just a different world no it's right here in your world believe me your politicians and everybody else they are most of them many of them are luciferian to the core you know, most most of them are. You know, they 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 are Luciferian to the core, and uh, 
we need to understand that um, what the religion of the world really is. And, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of going to talk about that tonight, and I'll kind of, it's just going to kind of be a brush over of that a little bit to try to get you into the right mindset to understand what's going on. You know why? Because once you figure out that the world is against Christ completely, and you stand alone, then you won't look for Ron Paul, the Republican Party. You won't look for any of these people because you'll, you'll figure out that that all of them, all of them are are gonna are probably working for somebody else, <laughs> and it's not the Christ of the Bible. Okay, the majority of them, 99% of them, 99.9% of them that say they're good people and all this, they're part of these they're part of these organizations. They're part of these lodges. They're part of these these secret orders and everything else uh, of things that are out there. And um, we're seeing a rise of this spiritism. I mean, do you think that it was it was not so blatant years ago? It wasn't so blatant years ago. It is very blatant now. Witchcraft is everywhere. I mean, it's in every movie. They have vampires and werewolves and all that in, in everything that is shown now. What's the most popular shows? What are the most you think about this? What are the most popular things that are on television and everything else? What are they? It's occultic things. And people oh, that's just imagination. No, it's not. It's occultic things. They they are the most popular. And these people actually believe this stuff. They they believe it. You know, I mean it's just we don't we sometimes just try to divorce ourselves from that. Now in the sense we're to be away from all of it and we're, we're not to have anything to do with it and we're to, we're to um, you know, uh, we're to reprove the unfruitful works of darkness. You know, the Bible doesn't say just ignore it. It says to reprove it. You, you see that? There's some people that would just say, well, yeah, you know, abstain from all appearance of evil and then just, you know, no, it says have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of dark. You can go ahead and start that. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So if, if you never talk about it, if you never expose it, how can you reprove it then? You can't. And that's why we need to understand our enemy. I started, when I preached to you that, that series on Satan, I tried to include as much as I could about that so you could understand that whole spirit. Well, if you've not listened to those, some of you should download some of those and listen to them. Because it, it, we got to understand the spiritual warfare, the absolute warfare that is there. It's, I mean, it's, it, there is a war going on. And uh, and sides are being the sides are being drawn. It's it's coming to a head, and it's getting worse and worse all the time. Uh, you know the things that are being that is okay today. I mean, for instance, not very. Did you know that not very many people know that that um, the founder of Planned Parenthood was a, was a theosophist. She was an occultist, Margaret. Uh, Sanger. She was in the occult. All she was doing was following her religion. That's, that was her religion. She was an evolutionist too. She was following what? Luciferianism. That's what she was following. Why do you think they murder babies? Hello? What do you think they do it for? They're sacrificing them to Lucifer. That's what they're doing. That's what it's about. Yes, she is. Only she got to do it legally. Think about it. Legally. Did you ever think a time in this country that... So, so what are we? Well, I don't think we're a Christian nation. I honestly think this is a Luciferian nation. The day all those politicians and that Supreme Court decided that it was okay to murder 50 million babies and, and, and just ignore... I mean, what do we say? We just went, we just, we signed it off. Yeah. If you haven't listened to Brother Paul's sermon, I just, I, I, I um, sent you all an email. Out, listen, download Brother Paul's sermon or listen to it online on, on 10 reasons against abortion that he preached, 10 biblical reasons against abortion that he preached downtown. The other day, that is a good sermon, and it needs to get out. I'm thinking about just uploading it to Sermon Audio as well and getting it on there so people can hear that because it is very helpful and it's very needed. 
Uh, I mean, we are so blinded. We, we are so blinded by just, and dumbed down and numbed to everything. Like, he's got a bumper sticker on his car that says, uh, abortion is infinite genocide, correct? Infant genocide, excuse me, infant genocide. Infant genocide. Yeah, with a swastika on it. I, I want one of those. Because the, 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 per, the, the point of it is, is, listen, that to me is shocking that he has that sticker. When I seen it, it shocked me. You know what that told me? It's really sad because it shouldn't shock us that way when we see that. We ought to be so bold in our stand against this wickedness that we cry out against it and we speak out. But this world, and America especially, is being dumbed down and numbed to it. It's no longer an atrocity. Yeah, it's no longer. So why is that? Well, I believe, it's, it, it, I believe all that started in Genesis chapter 3. So let's turn there. And we'll get started. Let's pray while you're turning there. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. And we thank you for your goodness to us, Lord. We just pray you should bless us now. Help us understand the word of God here, Lord. Help us understand the truth of this. How serious this is, Lord. This Luciferian religion that is, that is all over the world, that has captivated the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, there's no way that, that, that we could cover the, the extent of Luciferianism in this world in one message. There, there, there isn't any way that we could actually do that. But what we can do is, un, is get an understanding. By, by the way, this isn't graphic or anything like that. None, it's, not, it's not like that. This sermon is not going to be like that. I'm not going to talk about any real graphic things or anything. But what we are going to do is examine where did Luciferianism start? Where did it start? It started in the garden. The doctrine of Luciferianism... It really started in Genesis chapter 3. As we look at Genesis chapter 3, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now there's two steps of, of, de, of, of I would say, um, not progression, so would it be degression? What would that be where, where we go down, degrading? You know, what's that? Yes, we, we're going back here. Okay, now what happened here? Two steps down. We took two steps away here that caused all of this, that led to this fall, this complete fall of, of, of man. Um, now, but of the, so, so, she, so she says, but of the tree of the garden, so she adds to God's word. We're going to talk about that in a second. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. What's this? This is the promise. This is Luciferian promise to man. Now watch this. This is a Luciferian promise to man. Ye shall not surely die. What do we see today? Finding any way within a human can find to prolong his life. Satan even said it. Skin for skin, he said. He said a man will do anything he can to save his life. He knows the human nature. He knows it well. That's what he said about Job. He said skin for skin, man will give all he has to save his life. He'll do it. He don't care what he has to do to save his life. He'll do it. And he knows it. Saint Lucifer understood that. He understood it quite well. And the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof. Then your eyes shall be opened. Huh. What is this? Illumination. Amen? It's illumination. He said, your, your eyes shall be opened as soon as you eat. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now notice what happened. And the eyes of them were both of them both were opened. Pew. 
The eyes of them both were open. Now, there's, there's a lot of speculation as far as what that actually means right there. Uh, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not correcting the Bible. I'm not changing the thing. I'm just telling you what the speculation is. It's not proven. It's speculation. But some people believe that that was that illumination from Satan, that third eye opening, when it says their eyes were open, that it was an illumination to evil. It was illumination to something else uh, that was there. Now, whether whatever and we can see, the one thing we can see for sure is that their eyes were open. And they did see, and they did disobey God, right? We understand that. Now, uh, we'll stop there for a second and go on to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 4, but we are quickly going to come back to this story if we read a few things. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Well, it's pretty easy where the light comes from, isn't it? It comes from God. But what happened? They're blinded by the light of Satan. So they can't see the light of God. See, they're getting light from the God of this world. And that's, that's Luciferianism. That's what that is when it says he is the God of this world. That's who he is. People don't like to admit that. They don't, like, they don't like to talk about that, but he is. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into a what? An angel of light. What does that mean exactly? Is it just his appearance? No. That's part of it. But Satan has always offered man light. He has always offered him a light. Not the light of the world, but a light. He's always offered them that. He's still offering him that in other Gospels, in secret mystery cults. Oh, to get to know the secret of the ages. The hidden word of Freemasonry, or, 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 or the, the occultic secrets. What is that light? We're going to look at that. What is that light that he offers? And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. That's not hard to understand, folks. It means there's some ministers out there that pretend like they're preaching the Bible and they're really not preaching the Bible. They're actually preaching occultic messages like Joel Olstein out there preaching. I mean, if you read some of his statuses, I go to his Facebook page sometime just to look at the statuses that he says because I can't believe how much humanism and wickedness. And then I take his quotes and I mock him and I put them on my page and I mock him with them and show him how absolutely demonic and wicked his quotes are because all he is selling is humanism. That is what he is selling to the high. That is the gospel of the new age, humanism. That is the gospel of today, humanism. And it's even crept into churches where God exists to make you happy. God is there just to serve you to be at your beck and call. Scary, isn't it? But that's how many people treat God. In contrast, I want to read you something here uh, the, from Luciferian website here. It doesn't get into too deep or anything, but, but just, just to give you an understanding of what these people believe and listen to some of the catchphrases. In contrast, Luciferianism seeks to enlighten all of humankind. Well, that makes sense because we know that that statement is true, what they're saying as far as the way they understand it, because we see in Genesis, what was he trying to do with Eve? He was trying to enlighten her. He was trying to give her light. Right? And Luciferians are encouraged not to convert. Well, of course not. But to spread knowledge. See, there's that catchphrase. You hear that? We're going to look at a few words of knowledge here. But, but knowledge, to spread knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up. 
Charity edifieth, the Bible says. But to spread knowledge, understanding, and tolerance wherever possible. Helping others to realize the potential for greatness within themselves. See it? That's what he did. That's what he did in the garden. God doth know that, the, that in the day ye eat thereof, ye shall be as gods. Same thing. The God is within you, Eve. Mm. Scary stuff, isn't it? Okay, so she's, they say here that at helping others to realize the potential for greatness within themselves and to achieve as much as they can. There is a spotlight on doing good, doing good and placing others before the self, regardless of who they are. While Satanists are deeply involved in living for the moment, content to remain who, who or what they currently are, Luciferians seek ways to aid humanity's progression to the next stage. You got it? Satanism, they worship Satan as the beast, as like the, the, the darker side, okay? That's, Satanism and Luciferianism are not the same thing. Satanism, they worship him as a beast, as like a, like, like, like a darker side. Not so with Lucifer. He's the other side. The Luciferians worship him as the angel of light. Oh, no. All, you see, he got a bad rap with Jehovah. He was just misunderstood. You know, he got a bad rap. God's really the bad one. Lucifer's the one that wants to give the light to everybody, and God wanted to stop him. Get it? Sound like, did you, have you heard that before? Yes, you have. Genesis chapter 3. Remember? You just heard it. Oh, God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, he shall be as gods. Hey, look, God's the one that's trying to stop you here. Hey, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to get you to that next level. I'm trying to get you to godhood. See? Get it? Oh, this doesn't matter, right? Nobody believes this stuff, do they? Oh, yes, they do. And churches are teaching this same stuff right now, talking about getting to the next level all the time, talking about being a better you all the time. And it is, it is rampant in churches. And your family members are dealing with this. Yeah, you know what? The Lord's blessed us here. Right? We have a church, and we, we covenant together, and we believe the Bible. And, and yeah, we, we may not have those things in here, okay? But we know people that do. And you start looking around at it, you'll see the people that do. When somebody starts saying stuff like that, you know, you can, you got to look for the best in you. Exactly. They're all designed for that purpose. Anyway, so he goes on to say, well, so, so Satan, they, Luciferians look at Satanism as like these morbid little beast kind of people, you know. Um, but Luciferians, they're the educated, illuminated ones. They're higher on the food chain. They're the illuminated ones. Are you understanding me? They're the ones that have all the knowledge and understanding. Okay. While Satanists are deeply involved in living for the... Okay, one religion deals with the self, while the other deals with humanity as a whole and the natural world in which we live. In spite of using similar archetypes, the Luciferian pursuit of knowledge and understanding has little in common with the satanic goal of immediate gratification. What are they saying? Well, they're saying that, well, as Satan, he appeals to the more baser of the sorts... With, as Luciferianism religion, he appeals to what? Those who want light. Those who want knowledge. Those who want understanding. Those who want to know something. Then he's going to give them some knowledge. Now you can see that, 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 that what the Bible says happened in the Garden of Eden. And the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. 
And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, number one, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, number two, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, number three, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now turn to First John chapter 2, because we see this same thing played out. It is a warning from God. We see the same warning from God. First John chapter 2, verse number 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, number one, the lust of the flesh. What do we see over here? And that when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and that it was pleasant to the eyes. You see number two? And that it was pleasant to the eyes. You see it? And number three, a tree. Right? A tree to be desired to make one wise. The pride of life. One, two, three. See it? Three. All three there happened in the garden. And that's why God says, love not the world. For the world passeth away, and the world passeth away. Well, excuse me, verse number 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Wait a minute. Yes, that's what God's promise was, wasn't it? Well, Satan says, just here, take of this fruit and you'll be as gods. Hey, you're going to be great. Things are going to work out great for you. What does that sound like? God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. That's what it sounds like. Your best life now, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. All of what Joel Osteen and these other prosperity preachers and some of these Baptist preachers that are that are really preaching these positive, feel-good messages all the time, well, what are they? What are they doing? Preaching this. Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Isn't it amazing how he just he's rela he's going back to Genesis really and he's showing you what happened how how man fell and he's saying that's all of the world and who did we say the god of this world is Satan is the god of this world that that so that luciferian religion is the is the is the religion of this world it is the religion of this world to what the lust of the eyes the the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life that is the luciferian religion that is what it is, among other things, but that's, that's what it is. And notice it also says here that, that there's going to come this time, he says, little children, and it is the last time as you've heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they are not all, that they were not all of us. He's telling you what's going to happen. They're going to leave. They're, 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 it's not going to be real to them, and they're going to go after the world. Eve did not see the Garden of Eden as a garden enclosed and protected by God. At that point, she seen it as a prison that God was not going to let her have light. What she didn't realize is how protected she was if she obeyed and followed God, how protected she absolutely was. But what did he do? He offered her light. And many people take Satan up on his offer of light. Many do. Many people take him up. Today, if you would look and, and scan... By the way, many of the cults, 
The Bible says that the, lady, the, 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 the woman is the weaker vessel. If you realize many cults are started by women. If you look at people, some of the most wicked people ever were women. Uh, Helena Blavatsky, uh, uh, Anne Besant, um, let's see, who else? Uh, Ellen G. White, the Seventh-day Adventist lady. Uh, the Pentecostal movement, the ladies that run the, that, that started the Pentecostal movement and, and pushed that Pentecostal movement, all what carried away silly women carried away. They wanted that light. They they wanted that light that was offered. Lucifer first attack first attack was on the woman and on the words of God. He attacked God's word first by this way. Yea, hath God said? First attack on God's word. Question God. Question God's word. First attack. What was the next thing that happens when you question God's word? Number two, you will add to God's word when you question God's word. If you question his word, you will add to his word. What did Eve do? Eve entertained, Eve entertained, say, uh, Lucifer's, uh, Lucifer speaking to her and say, Yea, hath God said? So then she accepted that into her ears, and then what happened? She added to God's word. And neither shall you touch it lest you die. Well, he didn't say that. But she added that, didn't she? Hmm. So goes the way of the modern translation, by the way. So goes the way of the, of the corrupt translations of the Bible today. So went the way of it back in the eight, late 1800s, 1870s, and 1880s when they, when they started to look for a new translation. They wanted to correct the King James Bible. They, they had to get a, a revised version to fix it. So what did they first say? Well, yea, hath God said, is this really an accurate translation? Is it really right? Is it really uh, according to the originals? And then what happened? West Cotton Hort came in. What did they do? Started adding and subtracting. That's the way it goes. I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure, actually. I don't know what they say. But I will tell you this. They, all these modern, modern translations, and we're going to get to one right now here, actually, one of the most prominent ones that will show you that they are trying to get you to believe that Lucifer and Christ are the same person. And Freemasonry flirts with that idea. Uh, the Ascended Masters flirt with that idea. Well, they, they come out and say it. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> They have a mixture, kind of one side is God, one side is Satan. Um, but, they, but they mix it anyway. But they hear the whisper of Lucifer, yea, hath God said, and then they add and take away in modern perversions. They add and take away from the word of God. Just about everybody knows the word Lucifer as another name for Satan. The word Lucifer is found one time in the King James Bible, Isaiah chapter 14 and verse number 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut to the ground, which did weaken the nation, which did weaken the nations? What's the NIV say, though? The word Lucifer is clean, bald-headed, gone, and now this creature is identified as the morning star. Lucifer is the morning star in the NIV. How, here's, here's what the NIV says. How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, who, you who once laid low the nations. So we know that in the NIV, the morning star is a negative evil figure, right? He was fallen from heaven. He was cast down to the earth. Can we find the morning star anywhere else in the NIV? The following passages in the NIV show the morning star as Jesus Christ. Yes. That's right. The NIV in Revelation 22, verse number 16, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to give you the testimony for the church, this testimony for the churches. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright morning star.
And then the NIV, 2 Peter 1, 19, and we have the word of the prophets made more certain. Man, I hate the NIV. I can't even hardly read it. It's like somebody... It, I'm telling you, it's horrible. It's, I can't even re, you can't even read it that fast. I can't even read it that fast. It has no rhythm to it. It has no... It, it, it's just... It's, it's terrible. I, don't, I mean, I don't look at it that much either, but when you see it on there, it's like, man. Uh, I, Jesus, sent mine angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Uh, let's see. And we have the word of the prophets made more certain, and you will do well to pay attention to it. <laughs> you idiot. As to light shining in the dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. In the NIV, Revelation 2.28, I will also give him the morning star. Well, they're talking about who their cult leaders tell them to talk about, and that's Jesus and Lucifer, and trying to switch the roles and trying to make them the same person. And, 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 and that's the light that of the new age. See, this is the light of the new age. Luciferian doctrine is the light of the new age. And if they can mix those two together, and listen, how many millions of people have used that translation. Millions. One of the most popular translations ever, besides the King James Bible. One of the most popular modern translations. Right. Anyway, I've got a few notes here too. Okay, so we'll, we'll move on with this. Anyway, John, the, anyway, he's supposed to be the light giver, right? So all the modern perversions are designed to prepare you for who then? Who are they preparing people for? What light are they preparing him for? Or are they preparing for the light of the Antichrist, the false light? They, they, they're not preparing you for the great shepherd. They're preparing you for the idle shepherd. That's who they're preparing you for. Oh, come on. Nobody's really... Is there really a, a worldwide conspiracy against God? I don't know. Bang your head against the wall six times if you can't figure that out, I guess. And maybe on the seventh time, you'll, it'll make sense to you. Because, yeah, it's been going on for a really long time, okay? Ever since Satan rebelled against God. And, yes, he's out there. And, yes, he has power. And, yes, he hates you. Okay, I wish people would wake up. I know pastors never preach about this stuff anymore. Uh, they, they never talk about it. Oh, that's taboo. No, that's the devil, and he's got you fooled. Because the best thing he can do is cover himself up like he did in the Son of God movie. Nope. Satan just disappeared. They made him disappear because the guy that was playing him looked like Obama. Well, if the shoe fits, wear it. What's the problem? I mean, I've always thought of Obama as a devil. Hey, man. Sure, go ahead, brother. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this scroll. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in this scroll. If anyone takes words away from this scroll, wow. see, God will take away from that person any share of the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in this scroll. In this scroll. They don't like the book. No, but you see, there's a reason why they keep saying this scroll. They keep saying that because then that's all originals. That's all originals. It's all originals. It's all originals. It's not applicable for today. It's not applicable for today. Yeah. Well, they don't believe they have a Bible anyway. A bunch of devils. They don't believe it anyway. <clears throat> All right. John chapter 8, verse number 12. Then spake Jesus again to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jesus is the true light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. There's so much more. When you turn to John chapter 8 and what Jesus is saying there, turn there quickly here. Um, I'll keep moving along here as fast as I can, get as much of this in as I can. 
uh, for you. It's early yet. Hey, no problem. I mean, man, we'll get you out on a good time here. Well, maybe. Who knows? I don't know. I'm telling you. Is it? It's 830. I love the fact that that's a half an hour slow. That's great. I'm going to keep moving. All right. All right. Hey, I didn't know that. Why'd you tell me that? I could have kept going for hours. All right. Uh, anyway. Wow. We've been here a long time. Then spake Jesus again to them. Okay, so he says, And the Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. So these Pharisees came, and they're judging him, and they're mad at him, and they're, they're really angry with him. And he tells them, you know, more than once he's told them, You're of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. And you don't know my father. If you knew him, you'd know me. And, uh, and everything like that. Then in John chapter 9, he says, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now, a common now I want to read you about what these this where's this gnosis or this knowledge come from that they're looking for? Where is all this coming from? I want to read you this here. A common characteristic of some of these groups was the teaching that the realization of gnosis or esoter esoteric or intuitive knowledge is the way to salvation of the soul from the material world. They saw the material world as created through an intermediary being the, the demurrage rather than directly of by God. In most of the systems, they were seen as imperfect. Uh, and, and offers there's offer evil there. Different Gnostic schools sometimes identified uh, things differently there. Jesus is identified by some Gnostics as an embodiment of the supreme being who became incarnate to bring Gnosis to the earth. What is that? That's that secret esoteric. Jesus came and he and he and he was teaching in, in secret and he came and he had this little, you know. I mean, some of these guys teach that Jesus that you know they kind of imply that, well, Jesus, he had his own cove, you know, and he was teaching this and he had his own, you know, basically like a witch's cove or something. He was he was he was a secret it was a secret society or it was a secret order that he was teaching. No, he said pretty much go scream it from the rooftops. Uh, go, go preach it everywhere. Uh, you know, after after he had risen, he said, "Go preach it everywhere." He said, "Wait, tarry ye in Jerusalem till you, till you receive power from on high. After that, go everywhere." You know, shout it from the rooftops. It's no secret. This book is not meant to be a secret. It's meant to be revealed. Satan is the concealer. Lucifer is the one that would have you believe that he would give you light, but all he does is give darkness. Because his light leads to hell. He'll light your way to hell, is what he'll do. But some of these people, Albert Pike, uh, he, he would say, now, a Freemasonry, the light of Freemasonry, I'm going to read you some quotes here, but the light of Freemasonry, what is this light? Is it that Gnosis light, that esoteric secret light? Well, the light of Freemasonry is Lucifer. That's who the light of Freemasonry is. But I'm going to read you some of And Albert Pike, um, some people call him Fat Albert Pike. He was a big dude. He was an evil man. He was a very evil, evil man. Do you know who Albert Pike is? Oh, he's an absolutely evil man. Yeah, he looks like Santa Claus, only like really dark and sadistic and much more of a pervert probably. But um, anyway... I have nothing good to say about him. But anyway, listen, uh, here's what, here's what, uh, here's what, I think this is Manly, okay, Manly P. Hall was, was in Freemasonry, and this is what he said. He said, the day is, by the way, Manly P. Hall was one of the most um, decorated Masons. I mean, he was big time esoteric. He wrote a book, Manly Hall, he wrote Secret Teachings of All Ages. And uh, uh, if you're not saved and you're not walking by faith, do not read that book. Just stay away from it. Don't let your kids read those things and stay away from it. Because, I mean, you've got to have the shield of faith. You've got to be walking with the Lord before you read st stuff like that. I don't recommend dwelling on stuff like that, but sometimes in order to reveal some of these things, you have to read some of those things. Anyway, so the day has come when fellow craftsmen must know, he's talking about Masons, then the craft. That isn't a sign. Um, anyway, um, the day has come when fellow craftsmen must know and apply their knowledge. The lost key to their grade is the mastery of emotion, which places the energy of the universe at their disposal. Man can only expect to be entrusted with great power by proving his ability to use it constructively and selflessly. When the mason learns that the key to the warrior on the block is the proper application of the dynamo of living power, he has learned the mystery. He must follow in the footsteps of his forefather, Tubalcane who with the mighty strength of the war, God hammered his sword into a plowshare. The seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands, and before he may step onward and upward, he must prove his ability to properly apply energy. 
That was Manly P. Hall in his Lost Keys of Freemasonry, The Secrets of Hiram Abiff. Who's Hiram Abiff? Well, he's the Antichrist. That's who Hiram Abiff is. Okay. Both Lucifer and Lucis come out of the same word, root Lucis uh, being the Latin generative ba case meaning of light. The Alice Bailey was another occultist. Okay, the, the Alice Bailey's reason for choosing the original name are not known to us, but we can only surmise that they, like the great teacher Helena Blavatsky, great teacher, devil, for whom they had enormous respect, sought to elicit a deeper understanding of the sacrifice made by Lucifer. See, the, these people, I, I want you to know these people were accepted. In fact, I, from what I understand, Helen Keller was a theosophist. His fall, his coming down. Okay, Blavatsky, whom they had enormous respect, sought to elicit a deeper understanding of the sacrifice made by Lucifer. Alice and Foster Bailey were serious students and teachers of theosophy, a spiritual tradition which views Lucifer as one of the solar angels, those advanced beings who theosophy says descended, thus the fall from Venus to our planet, eons ago to bring the principle of mind to what was then the animal man. In the theosophical perspective, the descent of the solar angels so they're bringing light solar angels was not a fall into sin or disgrace but rather an act of great sacrifice this is suggested in the name lucifer which means light bearer they are saying that's where they get their light from so she goes on to talk about the mystery of the descent or fall to the earth of the rebellious angels and soul and solar angels she's talking again lucifer is what the, lucifer is their god that's who they believe in. That's who they follow. Man, there's there's so much good stuff here that was sent to me. I don't have time to read it all. But um, Helena Blavatsky founded the Theosophical Society in 1875. Her most popular work was a two-volume book she wrote called The Secret Doctrine. Everything's a secret. The Secret Doctrine. Why? Because you've got to go get that light. Because you're in darkness. What do they say to Freemasons when they first come there? What's the first thing? What are you here for? For light. The secret doctrine in which she woefully states Lucifer represents life, thought, progress, civilization, liberty, independence. Lucifer is the Logos, the serpent, the savior. It is Satan who is the God of our planet and only God. And the only God, the celestial virgin, which thus becomes the mother of gods and devils at one and the same time, for she is ever-loving, beneficent deity. But in antiquity, in reality, Lucifer, Lucifer is his name. Anyway, so, so, um, wow. By the way, an estimated 400 to 500,000 Southern Baptists are Masons. Mm, mm, mm. Wicked, wicked. I want to read you a few other things here on this on this light, and then we'll be almost done here. Wow, time flies by fast when you're having fun. All right, um, let's, at least I'm having fun anyway. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Um, I want to read you, uh, let's see, is this it right here? They go on, so what is that light? The, the Masonic religion should be by all of us initiates, the high, the high of the high degree, maintaining the purity of Luciferian doctrine. If Lucifer were not God, would Adonai, whose deeds prove his cruelty and his hatred of men, barbarianism and repulsion for science, would Adonai his, and his priests culminate him? Yes, Lucifer is God, and unfortunately Adonai is is also God, for the eternal law is that there is no light without shade, no beauty without ugliness, no white without black, for the absolute can only exist as two gods, darkness being necessary for light to serve as its foil, as the pedestal of necessity states to the state. Mm, mm, mm. Wicked. And anyway, so, so they, they, uh, their light comes from... Um, you know, yeah. He says here, the seething energies of Lucifer in the hands before, and before he may step upward and onward, he must prove his ability. So he's saying that that is their light. That's the light that they come from. I, I was looking for the uh, the quote I had uh, by uh, Alistair, not Alistair Crowley, but um, I think I have it right here somewhere if I can find it. Anyway, what he did say 
uh, and it, he, he said that uh, that Lucifer is the light bearer. Doubt it not. That was what uh, Albert Pike said. Um, so I mean, Albert Pike was Albert Pike is the only Confederate general that is buried in Washington D.C. 13 blocks from the Capitol building. Does that not strike you as odd? Why 13? Why a Confederate general there? Why is he buried there in the Grand Lodger? Why is he there? Why? Because he did more for Freemasonry. But he was a wicked man. What he did to Indians and what he did to people, they had to, they had to relieve him of his duties because he was so heinously wicked. So how do these men thrive like this? Because they look for light, and they get it, and they get protection from the devil. And the God of this world hath blinded their minds. What did God say about knowledge? And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is in the pleasant of the sight, and good for food, and the tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, and a tree of knowledge of good and evil. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Look, at, I find it interesting that the very next time the word knowledge is used is in Exodus 31, verse 3, And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. True knowledge comes from God. Because it comes with wisdom, not just knowledge. It comes with wisdom. Job said, I will fetch my knowledge from afar, and I will ascribe righteousness to my maker. Where did he get his knowledge from? From God. In Ecclesiastes, the preacher said this, For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Boy, he ain't lying. Mm. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Yep. In Hosea chapter 4, verse number 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of, my, of thy God. I will also forget thy children. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. You know, I know a lot of people that are always looking for another answer besides it's right in front of their face right here. If you're a born-again Christian and you have the Holy Ghost of God inside of you, you have no business being anywhere near any of these esoteric religions, any of these cult clubs, or any of these Masonic orders. They're a curse and a hex, is what they are. They're wicked as the devil. Lucifer offers that esoteric light of rebellion against God. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which has weakened the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation, the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Thou sealest up the sum of full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Full of wisdom. Always had that wisdom, that knowledge, that light. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the burl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou wast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. By the way, others agree that he's, he's that morning star, so to speak, here. Blavatsky echoes this. She says the pentagram is the morning star. You, you almost think there was some kind of satanic plot to pervert the word of God and to bring out a version that would sway people from the truth and that would turn the truth of God into a lie. And they would worship the creature more than they would the creator. Sounds about right. Well, you know, we really ought to start believing this book. Because if somebody, oh, no, you don't understand. They're just innocent people, and they just they, they put together this, this translation. And they, they just wanted to help people read it better. That's all they wanted to do. They wanted people to be able, because people can't understand that King James Bible. 
I mean, you know, they, they can't. You're right, they can't when they're not saved. But boy, I'll tell you what, you get saved, and you'll understand it. It'll make a whole lot of sense to you. Why? Because you have the illumination of the Holy Ghost of God, not some fake illumination from Satan. When the God of this world hath blinded your mind, that you can't read it and you can't understand it. Why? Because these things are spiritually discerned. That's why the natural man receiveth not the things of God, neither can he know them. They're spiritually discerned. Amazing. We're almost done here. But Lucifer the light bearer, strange. Here's, here's what uh, Albert Pike said. He said, Lucifer the light bearer, strange and mysterious name to give to the spirit of darkness. Lucifer, the son of the morning. Is it he who bears the light? And with its splendors intolerable, blinds, feeble, sensual, or selfish souls? Doubt it not. There are comments on the World Wide Web uh, claiming that the Lucis Trust was once called the Lucifer Trust. Absolutely it was. That was what she believed. Helena Blavatsky was an evil woman. There's another occultic school out there, though, that I found fascinating when I was just doing a little bit of Google search today. It's called the Servants of the Light. School of Occult Science. She, they, they go on to say it is a modern Western mystery school which teaches through correspondence the curriculum which deals with the so-called esoteric sciences, which are the Western equivalent of the Eastern yoga systems. The Western system is just as effective as the noble as the Eastern systems, and, and they both lead to the same ultimate goal integration of the psyche and soul and a direct knowledge of the spiritual realities which underlie manifestation. Under terms, which another term which covers both paths is the way of unification. Want to know where they got their inspiration from? Aleister Crowley. Aleister Crowley said this, I was not content to, be, to believe in a personal devil and serve him in the ordinary sense of the word. I wanted to get hold of him personally and become his chief of staff. Why? He wanted light. You know, they, they hide things in symbols, correct? We, I've taught you that before, right? Here's the Servants of the Light School of the Occult Sciences. Anybody recognize anything there? Yeah, you see that pen? What's that doing there, that hexagram? What's that? Huh. They're, they're all fascinated, aren't they? They're all fascinated with these, keeping the angles right and, the, and, the, uh, and keeping, a, I guess, getting a square deal. I don't know. I guess that's what they think they're getting. I don't know. They're, gonna get a, uh, they're not going to get a very square deal in hell because um, that's where they're headed. Anyway, you know what's interesting to me, though, and sad at the same time, is these people, they say they're servants of the light. What's their goal? Oh, they're trying to give you light. You know... Folks, we have the light of the world right here, and we have the Word of God, and, the, and this world is in darkness, and Jesus said it was in darkness. He said the whole world lieth in the hand of the wicked. It's, 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 it's in the hand of the wicked one, and he, and he said that you're of your father, the, the, the devil, the lust of your father, you will do. And he said that this world is in darkness, and what did he come to do? He came to give light. He said, I am the light of the world. What has Satan tried to do? Give another light. He's got another light. It's a Luciferian religion, and he wants to give it to the whole world, and he wants them to embrace it, and they are embracing it. And these people that think they're more intelligent than God out there right now, they think they're smarter than God, this is the way they live their life, and they believe. That's why they believe that killing you does God service, whether it's soft killing through through food, or whether it's through environmental things, or whether it's through health things, or whether it's through whatever way they possibly can, whether it's through wars and, 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 and many battles and wars and everything else, they'll do it. And they think they're helping the planet. They think they're helping. You know, they're, 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 they're helping everything along. They're the enlightened ones. They're the illuminated ones. And this, this light, this illumination of the world here, 
Let me tell you something, and, and I'm done here. I don't think I have anything else here for you. But I, but I, I want to say something to you here. There's been a lot of talk about about a spiritual awakening going on. You know, that devil George Bush when he was in office, this last George Bush, the younger George Bush. Um, by the way, if you trace the Bush family back, this is, I mean, it, it's, this is, I'm not being mean. This is just fact. Prescott Bush supported Hitler's war in Germany. These guys play both sides. He supported it. Look it up. Look it up. And uh, anyway, so, but he said that, he said one day, he said, you know, I just believe that there's, this was like right a year or two before he left office. He goes, I, I believe that there's a spiritual kind of awakening happening. I just, I just, I really feel that. And all the Christians are like, yeah. He wasn't talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> he, did you think he was talking to you? No, he wasn't talking to you. He 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 wasn't talking to you. He he was talking to his other cult members. Because there has been ever since the days of people like Aleister Crowley and Helena Blavatsky and all those people around the turn of the 19 when things went over to 1900 around that time there started to be this rise in occultism. Guess when it saw its its greatest strides? When they got people off of this King James Bible, and they and they gave them a, another word. They gave them a, another word. Why? Well, because the devil's not afraid of that other. He's not afraid of that one. Why? Because it's not the completed word. You say, preacher, now come on, you're taking this a little too far. Okay, well let me ask you what happened in the Garden of Eden. Let's go back there, okay? What would have happened if Eve quoted exactly what God told her? Because what did she quote? She added to God's word. What did Jesus do when he, when he met with Satan in the, in the hour of his temptation there? What did he do? He quoted exactly what God said. Why? Because it has power. God's words have power. And Jesus didn't mix God's words. Satan tried to on him. He said, hey, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. He said, hey, you know what? And he quoted part of the verse. He didn't quote the other part of the verse, that he would crush that adder and that serpent's head. He didn't want to quote that part. He left that kind of out. That wasn't something he wanted to talk about. Why? Well, because it's talking about his defeat. And see, Satan's fine with you having some of God's words. He doesn't want you to have all of God's words. And that's what happened. And that's what happened around the 19th. And now what do we see? We see a rise in occultism everywhere. We see presidents that say they believe in Jesus Christ while they visit, while they visit um, uh, the Bohemian Grove. And they, they, and, they, and they visit all these, uh, oh, now you're getting conspiracy. No, it's not conspiracy. Their name's on the list. They admitted it. There's no conspiracy there. I mean, Nixon, Nixon used a lot of bad words to talk about that. But Nixon, what he said was, he said, they're, they're just a bunch of, I'll be nice and say, I won't say what he said. But he said, there's a bunch of fruits there, basically. He said they they're just run they run around there a bunch of sodomites there. He didn't say that. I won't use his words. But he said but he said that's all they are. They're a bunch of sodomites that run around there. That's all they are. And they're they're doing a lot of wicked stuff there. So all these people get to say they're no. What are they? Who are they serving? Lucifer. When when he was when he was asked when George Bush was asked if he was in a cult. The skull and crossbones when he was asked on live television? Because both of them were members. Him and John Kerry were both members of the same cult from the university they went to when he was asked about it. What did he do? It's a secret. I can't tell you. And he laughed at it. He was laughing. Why? Well, why, why don't you just say? Why don't you just talk about it? What does this number mean to you, they asked him. What is this? He goes, I can't tell you. It's a secret. And he kind of laughed it off like it was nothing. 
Oh, but that's just conspiracy guy. No, that's, they're devilish. They're wicked. And their religion is Luciferianism. And that's the religion of the world. And they're a bunch of cultists is what they are. That's exactly what they are. And don't tell me these politicians believe anything close to this Bible when they can go in there and they can continue on day after day after day after day letting the murder of babies. You want me to tell you something right now? I can't go into everything and i got to stop. But I will tell you, there's so much that can be said about this. So much. Man, i got to stop. But let, 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 me, let me tell you this. All of your Supreme Court justices, all of your people, they're all connected together with these people. You can see them in pictures with popes and cardinals and everybody else that they're taking pictures with and they're buddying up with. And guess what? It's all against what you believe in this book and it's all against the way this nation was founded. But you have people that really think, hey, guess what? You hear guys like Alex Jones say, the spirit of 1776 is going to rise above 1984. Anybody know what the spirit of 1776 is? I bet you thought that was the founding of the nation, right? Or the Constitution. No. May 1st, 1776 was the founding of the Illuminati by a Jesuit priest. Ex Jesuit. That was the plan. That's the spirit of 1776. But I got a spirit that'll defeat it. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Alex Jones don't have the answer. He's going to die and go to a rotten sinner's hell. And he's following the Antichrist like all these political pundits are. Because if you stand for this book, you're not going to be rich and popular. And if you, tell, if you tell the truth and look at him like Elijah did Ahab and said, Thou hast sold thyself to wickedness, you're going to be hated of all men. It's good to be hated. And it's good to be on his side. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the truth of it. Thank you that we can embrace it, Lord. We can hold it. And it is the light. And you are the light of the world. And thank you, Jesus, that we don't have to fall for the devil's tricks. Lord, this world is in the hands of the devil. He's the God of this world, but Lord, you've given us the light of the glorious gospel to shine. Help us to shine that light, Lord. Help us to be the light of the world as well, to take the gospel out there, the lower lights, Lord, that you've made us to go out there and to preach and to tell the truth and to stand against wickedness in this present evil world that we're facing, this world that hates you, the world that hates Christ. Please, Father, give us strength. Give us protection. Give us guidance. Thank you for your light and your mercy. God, please be with your children. Help us to walk faithfully. Protect us. Keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.